Welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. Thank you so much for joining me. This is episode number 639. It is the third in a series of shows that I've had to kind of pre-record and email in. I'm doing it the day before so that I don't have to go into the studio because station management wants to minimize the number of people in the building. Today we are going to have my daughter, Dr. Heather Kavitko-White. She is a veterinarian. She's an internal medicine specialist. And we're going to talk about how the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak is affecting veterinary practices, especially a large emergency type practice like hers. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes complete with video are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com. Heather, thank you so much for joining me. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Heather, refresh my memory. I know you graduated from University of Dayton, and I believe that was in 2005, correct? Uh, yes, 2005, University of Dayton. <laughs> and then vet school was 2009. Yes, at Ohio State. And then Purdue, one year internship. Yeah, one year at Purdue, and then three years at Texas A&M University. So that was 2013 when you finished up your uh, specialty training. Yep. Okay. Yep. Wow, you've been doing this for a good while. I actually have now. It's crazy. 10 years. I had my 10-year vet school reunion, and uh, I've been doing internal medicine now since... 2013? Yep. Wow. Okay. Very cool. Everybody's working from home right now, so if you hear the kids, that is just what it is. Okay. Well, that's fine. So I'm speaking with my daughter, Heather. Heather is a veterinarian. She is an internal medicine specialist. She lives in Kansas City, Missouri. Actually, it's Parkville, Missouri, and you work at Blue Pearl. Yeah. Okay, so I decided to kind of ask Heather to enlighten us to the world of veterinary medicine and how the coronavirus has affected you guys. And so in Kansas City, you guys were a little bit later in the curve, correct? Um, yeah, so most of the issues here in Kansas City were related to spring break travel. Depending on the school district, the spring breaks were kind of March you know, mid-March, like spring break normally is. And so as people returned from Florida and other places where they went on spring break and being on airplanes is when we kind of started to have cases here. Oh, okay. So you really didn't have it until people started coming back from spring break. Correct. Are you guys under a stay-at-home order? Yes. When did that happen? Uh, I want to say probably March 23rd. March 23rd. Was, yeah, was the official. Okay. So here in Ohio, they shut down dental offices. Our last day to work was uh, March 16th. So March 17th on. Ooh, we're making breakfast, sounds like. Uh, yep. Yeah, but the veterinarians are still considered essential. So we're actually not on a stay-at-home work order. And yeah, as here. of now, that's all veterinarians. So it is certainly possible that at some point in time, it will, will only extend to emergency veterinary facilities as being essential. Okay. Okay. Which is what you guys are. Yes. Okay, so even though you're not an emergency vet, you have to be there because you do internal medicine, which oftentimes stems from, or rather is a, is a growth out of an emergency visit. Uh, yeah, or it's urgent, and if ignored, for instance, a newly diagnosed diabetic would become an emergency if it wasn't treated immediately. Okay. Now, how have you guys had to change your mode of operation because of this? So Blue Pearl is a very large corporation organization, and I'm fortunate for that because they're actually handling all the kind of details about everything and sending down protective orders and mandates. But so I think it was also on the 23rd, we switched to no clients, no people in the building. So we have at our locations here in Kansas City, we have three. We have cages in the lobby 
And when the owners arrive, we have locked doors essentially. And when the owners arrive, they call in from their car. They get permission to bring their pets and uh, leave it in one of these cages. Or if it's a cat, leave it in its carrier in one of these cages. And once they've cleared the lobby, then one of my staff will go and pick up the animal and bring it to our treatment area. And so then the, the visit proceeds as normal, except for that I do all communication with the clients over the phone. Oh, okay. Well, that's so a- they generally sit out in their car through the appointments, and we, we'll talk often several times, or a couple of times during any one appointment. Oh, wow. That's interesting. For nope. the emergency service, it's very much the same. It gets a little bit more difficult. You know, ultimately, we're trying to limit exposure amongst people. So certainly when there's a crisis mode it increases the anxiety level of everyone. Right. Of course, and understandably. So let me paint the picture again. So you're you're open, but your doors are locked. Is there a sign on the outside of the door that says, mm-hmm. call us? And when they call you mm-hmm. and they explain their situation, and then somebody yep. comes out from the back, unlocks the door, but says, don't come in until I've, I'm clear. I go back into the back. And when the... Oh, no, we actually can buzz people in. So oh. our uh, client service representatives, they're sitting at their normal position at their normal desk, and they'll buzz people in okay, so one they... at a time. Oh, got it. And then they're told there are four carriers out there. They're labeled A, B, C, D. Put your animal in A or something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And then, oh, interesting. Okay. And then you guys go, you bring them back, you assess them, and you're on the phone with them. So you have to get their permission to say, run this test or take that x-ray. And that's all done Mm -hmm. by phone. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So the noise you guys hear in the background is, as Heather was saying, everybody's working from home. And so there are noises from home. It's kind of funny. There's a, there are my granddaughters. (laughs) I hear them. (laughs) I'm talking to grandpa. You want to say hi real quick? Say hi. Nope, she's nope. shy. She's being shy. <laughs> was that, was that you don't want to say hi? You can't hear Grandpa? Oh, that's Evelyn. That's okay. Yeah. Okay, so I've got my AirPods in, so oh, she doesn't hear your voice. Doesn't know who you're talking to. Okay, so then, okay, and then you get on the phone and you you ask them the history. You ask them what have they had not been eating, um, what's the issue, and then you guys do the assessment. Okay. Yep. Well, yep. That, that's pretty neat. Now, is there a concern that animals can catch? the coronavirus and maybe give it to their owner or vice versa? As of right now in the veterinary community, they have confirmed that both cats and dogs can become, uh, they can develop antibodies to the virus. There is no indication and no significant reason to believe that they would then spread the virus back to people uh, because ultimately this virus is a human adapted virus and the cats and dogs would be not normal posts for this so there's these cases there's only been a couple so far and they've been in china and in europe and and then there's that case of the siberian tiger at the bronx zoo right yeah more of a concern right now for veterinary professionals is that they believe that cats and dogs can be fomites or basically vehicles for the virus to be spread on their fur. So there's a lot of coronaviruses, a a very large amount, cats and dogs, just like people have lots of coronaviruses. They know from the biologic behavior of other coronaviruses that it would be probably about 24 hours, maybe up to 72, if we're being very cautious, that a coronavirus might survive on the coat of an animal. And so we're only doing special precautions if the animal is owned or is a part of the family of a COVID positive case. Otherwise, we're wearing traditional barrier precautions like masks, face shields, uh, a gown, and gloves uh, when we retrieve the animal from the front okay. uh, and bring it back to our treatment area. And then from then on, just gloves. Although with the new CDC guidelines to wear masks, there are several locations of my organization that are already wearing masks all the time. And we're probably going to switch to that okay. shortly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mostly to prevent yourself from touching yourself in the face. Right, right, right. Because this animal, if it comes from a household that was exposed, could have it on its paw, right? Could have it not just on its coat, but yeah. could have it. Well, and, and if the animal belongs to a household where there was a, a known case, as long as they're stable, they're actually receiving a bath as the very first step in the process. Oh. If they're not stable, if they're an emergency, there are, again, the virus itself is not a very hardy virus, meaning it's pretty easy to kill. Right even though the disease that it causes is very severe. So there are wipes, really just kind of a concentrated medical hydrogen peroxide wipe, which is safe for the animal. And that will actually essentially kill the virus on contact. So for stable patients, they're getting a bath. Uh, So again, just regular traditional soap and water, just like washing our own hands will kill the virus. 
Right. It's just regular um, soap. If, yeah. Because it's like a protein, yeah. protein layer, right? Yeah. So again, the virus, although it can cause very severe illness, does not survive well in the environment, especially when it's exposed to kind of basic antiviral compounds like soap or like hydrogen peroxide. Again, this is a very concentrated hydrogen peroxide. I don't want people to think they can use hydrogen peroxide or alcohol. We just would not bathe an animal in isopropyl alcohol. It's a diluted mixture that you guys make up? No, they're commercially available, but they are made specifically for animals. These wipes. And that would only be used in, if it were an emergency. So we haven't had that situation yet. We saw the cat of a healthcare professional who had traveled in February and had tested positive and her cat was perfectly stable, got a bath. How do you give cats a bath? Thing. How do you give cats a bath? <laughs> <laughs> it helps to have a very deep wash table that they can't climb out of. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm fortunate. One of my veterinary nurses was a groomer for a long period of time. So I don't know. The cat was perfectly comfortable, perfectly fine, got its bath, and, you know. Because <laughs> that was going to be a separate question. I'm picturing dogs are no problem. They're used to having baths, but a cat? Oh. Yeah, usually they're uh, they're fearful, obviously, of this procedure and of having a bath. A fearful cat will do one of two things. One, freeze. And that makes it relatively easy to do a bath or to try and climb out. And when they're slippery and you have a very deep wash basin, <laughs> the climbing out's not so much an issue. And so you can basically bathe them while they're standing up oh, okay. attempting to slipperily climb out of the wash basin. Okay. I don't think I'm going to try that on Harry anytime soon in my cat. But uh... No, most cats don't need to be bathed excessively. They actually groom themselves unlike most dogs. So. Okay. All right. So now is your staff level the same? Let me put it this way. Right before we were told by the state that we couldn't operate, that they were shutting down a lot of what they considered non-essential businesses. And we're not completely shut down because I can still do emergencies, but we can't do regular fillings and cleanings and all of that. But before that even happened, both of my hygienists, one full-time, one part-time, basically said, I don't want to work anymore. I'll be back as soon as things are all clear and I hope I can keep my job, but I just don't want to work anymore. So we worked for a day where we just had to cancel all of the periodic exam and cleaning appointments. Have you had any employees step away out of fear? Uh, no, but again, our exposure being much, much less since we've limited contact with people in our job, right? So again, the common sense of what we know about viruses and transmission of viruses, although this has not been proven for COVID yet, that the animals cannot spread this to us other okay. than acting as a vehicle for the viruses passed from one person to another. Mm -hmm. So I don't think most of my nurses and my support staff feel unsafe. Um, I think just like everyone else, they feel concerned about what's going on. A lot of these individuals, just like everyone else, has family members that might be higher risk categories. But we haven't lost staff to fear. Okay. And I think that's reasonable. I think as a dentist, and they certainly the exposure risks uh, being in the oral cavity right. of a human, certainly higher, higher risk. So uh, I think it's for that reason that for the most part, veterinary medicine is has not been shut down entirely. We have a lot of ethical discussions, both on the floor at work and also higher up in the management levels about conservative use of PPE and making sure that we shunt PPE to the healthcare providers that need it the most. My own personal job as an internal medicine specialist, I don't use PPE other than gloves. I know for sure that our management, higher levels of management have switched products to things that are not being used right now in human medicine, like uh, sterile gloves that are specific for uh, vascular surgery, because these types of elective procedures and things are not happening right now. And what they really need is your standard nitrile gloves. In human medicine, they don't really use latex gloves because of the risk of latex allergies. Mm -hmm. So as veterinary professionals, we're able to use the latex gloves as long as myself doesn't have a latex allergy. It's no risk to the cat or the dog that I'm working on. So yeah. the veterinary community has a, a large role in everything that's going on. And as scientists and doctors ourselves with infectious disease specialists and cross species risks, actually playing a very large role in research, answering a lot of these questions, certainly I think has a very excellent comprehension of what are truths about this disease and what's known, what's unknown, what the myths are, and has a very high understanding of coronaviruses in general because veterinary species do develop these viruses just like people do. So we have veterinary researchers that probably know more about coronaviruses than some medical researchers, right? They've spent their life's work doing some of this. So. Yeah, because this type of virus has been around for a while, just not this particular mutation, right? Correct. Yeah. Interesting. Very interesting, Heather. Hey, it looks like it's time for us to go to a break. Can you hang with us? Sure. Okay, great, because I want to talk some more after the break. More with my daughter, Dr. Heather Kavitko-White, a veterinary internal medicine specialist, when we come back. You won't believe it, though. I want to hear your mind. 
There's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavico on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavico, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavico, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and road show. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavico and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavico for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavico, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavitko and Associates today, 614-262-9500. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode 639. We're speaking with my daughter, Dr. Heather Kavitko-White. She is a veterinarian. She practices in Kansas City, Missouri. She is a veterinary specialist in internal medicine. Heather, was SARS a coronatype virus? SARS is a coronavirus. SARS virus stands for sudden acute respiratory syndrome. And you can see how they, these two viruses are actually in the same class of viruses, the mm. same type of coronavirus. And you can see how COVID-19 could have just as easily been called sudden acute respiratory syndrome. Yeah, um, even more so now. Right. So that's just like COVID is a coronavirus. You know, I can't remember the... These are all acronyms, oh, not the true virus I'll name. look it up. I, I used to know myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's CO stands for corona, the VI stands for virus, and the D for disease. Formerly, the disease was referred to as 2019 novel coronavirus or 2019 NCOV. And I guess so now we call it COVID-19. Uh, yes. What advice would you have for people who own cats and dogs and they're sitting at home in quarantine. Is there anything special they should or should not do with their cat or their dog? Don't be fearful of risk of contamination from your pet. Certainly don't surrender your pet. That is not necessary and actually would be tragic for the pet care world. Um, in fact, now while being under quarantine is a great opportunity to foster or even adopt a pet. Pets serve very little risk to yourself. Um, you're more likely to uh, cause antibodies to your pet from this virus than the opposite. It does not seem like cats and dogs get critically ill from this. There was one case of a dog in Hong Kong that passed away. The dog was 15 years old and also had end stage or late stage congestive heart failure. And so very likely did not die of this virus, even though it had antibodies that tested positive. So, and I will, uh, I'll pass on a link that dad can post on the website. To, it was written by another veterinary professional about, you know, logical steps that you can do to kind of help the veterinary profession. Think about them as another frontline worker while you're making and donating your mask. The veterinarians might be an excellent place to donate those masks because truly the healthcare professionals are true frontline. They're going to need the real mask. They're much, much higher risk than we are. Having said that, veterinary medicine is essential and we don't want cats and dogs dying unnecessarily because they can't receive treatment that they need. Uh, right. Be patient. Be patient with your veterinarians during this process. Only bring your pets in if they are truly ill. It's okay if they're due for vaccinations to skip your vaccine for a month until this settles down. My top advice. So Heather, looks like we have to go to a break. Uh, can you hang with me a little bit longer? I know you're busy. You got the girls and all that, but can you hang on a little bit? Sure. Okay, great, because I want to talk some more after the break. 
And also after the break, I'm going to give you that link that Heather referred to, okay? So stay with us. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 639, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, not just a little bit. I don't know who to be, I'm a faithful cup, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, cause you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Weigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of the Reasons We Smile radio and road show. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? All right, we're back. If you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. I'm speaking with my daughter, Dr. Heather Kavitko-White. She is a veterinarian. She is a specialist in internal medicine, practices in Kansas City, Missouri at Blue Pearl. Before the break, I said that when we returned, I would give you that link that Heather was referring to regarding uh, an interesting webinar that you might want to watch. It's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and then the words rescue disinfectants dot com forward slash covid hyphen 19 forward slash. Okay. Again, that's HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash rescue disinfectants dot com forward slash COVID hyphen 19 forward slash. And by the way, when I said 19, I meant the number 19, not the word. So Heather, tell me what kind of care are you now providing at your veterinary hospital at Blue Pearl during this pandemic? Uh, just like in in human medicine and in dental med- uh, dentistry, like you said, Dad, we're not doing routine preventative care right now, which means vaccines, um, you know, your annual visit with your veterinarian. These are things that can be postponed, even if you're worried that your pet is due for vaccine. That sounds like really good advice. Now, we're hearing a lot of, um, I'm seeing it on TV and reading in the paper of how a lot of people right now are becoming depressed because of what's going on yeah. around them. And it feels like those people who have a pet somebody that can they can share their time with are probably less depressed, maybe happier? What would you think? Oh, there's a lot of literature to support that the human-animal bond is good for personal mental well-being. And I mean, that, that's been proven time and time again, that pets are valuable to human society as far as uh, mental health and uh, saving off depression. So yes, if you are feeling alone, like I said, now would be a great time to try and foster a pet or maybe even adopt a pet. So, yeah, I, um, yeah, absolutely. Whenever uh, Harry, my cat, is sitting on my lap purring and I'm petting him or even just looking at him across the room where he's all sprawled out in, in his own chair or one of our chairs where he just looks so relaxed. It's just like it feels like it just lowers my blood pressure just to look at him. <laughs> yeah, I feel the same way about a cat purring. <laughs> They're just so cute and they're just so cuddly and they're and it's just so relaxing. That's yeah. really cool. Now one more but thing. some people would feel some people would prefer to have a puppy to run around the house and play well, with. That's and that's true. okay too. And we've had that's that too, too and you have that and you guys grew up with pets and I like to think that that might be one of the reasons you wanted to be a veterinarian is because of all the animals we had at home, right? Sure. I don't know. How many animals did we have when I was five? When you were five? Well, we had we had Eddie, probably a dog, the, the boxer, yeah. and no. then we had Jingles. We had a cat, so we had a cat yeah. and a dog. Yeah. But one time we had something like three or four cats, I think, at a time, and one you dog. You know, I, I think most kids go through a phase of wanting to be a veterinarian, and then really two things happen in my experience. One, they realize that organic chemistry is hard. <laughs> 
I hear that one a lot. (laughs) Or two, they start to shadow in the veterinary industry and and find out that it maybe pulls on their heartstrings beyond what would give them a good quality of life. You know, Uh, yeah, it takes it takes a special person to go into healthcare. It's Um, more sadness than they thought. Yeah, there is a lot of sadness. Certainly, in what I do, I I almost never get to see a healthy puppy or kitten. You know, Um, you you get the worst of the worst. Yeah, there's not very much that I do that gets to directly fix anyone. I manage only chronic diseases, but. I get a lot out of it. I love my job and it it takes all types, right? All types of people. Yeah, really. And then lastly, because I appreciate your time. I know you're a very busy mom, but the people that you work with, are you guys talking amongst each other to make sure that when they go out, they have a mask on, that they're not going to bring something to work? Oh yeah. No, everyone that I work with is taking this very seriously. I'm fortunate because I work in a uh, satellite location and we have a relatively small group of people. I have eight or nine people that work with me during the day. It's very much a family. And for instance, one of my nurses, her in-laws who live with her, her father-in-law has cancer and is on chemotherapy and has had multiple surgeries. Oh, so he's immunocompromised. Yeah. They actually set up their camper, basically disconnected their hot tub at home in order to use that electric plug to set up their RV so that she and her husband could live isolated separated yeah in-laws. i've seen that where yeah. a lot of nurses are doing that those that have campers they come home but yeah. they don't go into the house they stay in yep. the camper out in the driveway yeah and again human healthcare professionals absolutely have extremely high risk extremely high burden from that weighs on their shoulders in my case i have a burden much like yours probably where you know if i were to get sick or become exposed what would happen to my staff if i'm not there to see the appointment i know, know and, yeah can't work yeah. nobody can work then Exactly. They'd have to probably, because our location is so small and family tight knit, they would probably have to close us down for two weeks. And, you know, so that's an, a big extra burden. So I'm happy to be doing what I'm doing. And, you know, I'm really grateful for the true frontline workers who are doing what they're doing so that we can continue doing what we're doing and, and help keep pets from undue suffering. Absolutely well said. Well, Heather, I really appreciate your time. I really do. And all this no problem. This cool information that I would not have known otherwise. So thank you for that. And, uh, oh, no problem. Tell the girls I said hi. You are your hands. That's great. Here, let me put you back on the phone. So you can get- oh, that's cute. That's Evelyn and Corey. <laughs> and uh, so, I will. Thanks so much, Heather. I really appreciate oh, it. And have a great day. Oh, no problem. All right. Thank you. Goodbye. And that was my daughter, Dr. Heather Kovitko White, who practices internal veterinary medicine at Blue Pearl in Kansas City, Missouri. I want to give you that link again to the webinar that Heather thought would be so interesting for you to uh, maybe access. And so are you ready? It is https colon forward slash forward slash rescue disinfectants dot com forward slash covid hyphen 19 forward slash. Okay, so you might want to look that up. Heather felt it was really good information. And so I want to just say that I hope you all are uh, being safe and that you are sheltering in place. Although hopefully you can get out and enjoy some of the warm weather and just stay six feet apart right from everybody. Remember that my office is one of the offices that has volunteered to be one of those emergency dental locations for people who don't have a dental home. Of course, it's an emergency location for those of you that are patients already. No problem with that. Give us a call at 614-262-9588. We actually went in and saw two emergency patients yesterday, Saturday, and then today about, well, right after I get off the air here, I'm going to be going into the office, I think about 930 to take care of uh, somebody who has a really bad toothache. I think we're going to be doing a root canal and a big filling and who knows, maybe even a crown. So we are available. We are open. We're just not going into the office every day. Again, 614-262-9588. And if you have an emergency, we are there for you. That's all the time we have today. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kvitko. And if you please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes are available on video at thereasonswesmile.com. Be sure to tune in next week and every week right here on your favorite station. Goodbye. This is 
Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1, urging you to tune in next week with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to TheReasonsWeSmile.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you'd like Dr. Kavitko, the world's most interesting dentist, to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614 614- 262-9588 or send an email to speaking at the reasons we